Shalom, shalom, daughters of Zion. I want to share some encouragement to the teenagers, those especially, those who follow the ministry, follow Pastor Dow, as we all follow the Messiah. I have Sister Justice before me. Sister Justice, where do you live now? Arizona. Arizona. You were born and raised in? South Carolina. South Carolina. So I have her before you. Uh, she's, she's so faithful with us, been serving with us for years. Since you were how old? 13. 13. And how old are you now? 22. So she's been following the Straightway Truth Ministry since she was 13 years old, and that's the reason for today's video. So, born and raised in South Carolina, now in Arizona with her lovely husband in Hebrew, uh, another faithful servant. I'm going to jump to some questions. The, we have some teenage girls, some daughters of Zion out there that watch us faithfully, and I know everything isn't easy. You know, some are in high school, right? And do you have anything encouraging to say to them as they go through the daily battles of, hey, I'm covering my head, I'm putting on a skirt, nobody else is. Uh, what would you say to them to just keep them encouraged because you went through it? Right. Um, around, I guess, my sophomore year, that's whenever I really started wearing head coverings and skirts and stuff. And um, yeah, you're going to get looks, you're going to get stares, whispers, people going to assume what you are. I had people tell me that I was Catholic, that I was Muslim, that I was Seventh-day Adventist, and it's like, why won't you just ask me? Because I didn't mind telling people, well, of course, you know, if you ask, I'll tell. But it's no biggie. Just know what you're doing it for. Um, you're serving the most high. You want to be holy. You want to keep yourself covered and set apart. And what you being in high school, middle school, wherever you are, it will show, you know, she's set apart from everybody else that you go to school with what's some of the temptations that were uh, possibly hard for you or not even just hard but they were there some of the temptations in high school that maybe you could uh, you made it through obviously now you're striving now you're married you're on the other side but what is something they, they may be going through you could help them with um peer pressure just from everybody else seeing that you not looking the way they are you don't act the way they do you don't do the same things they do, uh, the games that's on the weekend or parties that happen, all that stuff. I mean, it's just not part of your lifestyle anymore. So, a lot of peer pressure. So the yeah. the Sabbath, everything goes down on Saturday, right. right? So just all of the peer pressure, the former friends that you may have had or still have, whatever. But just just the peer pressure of everything else that that can be tempting to just be like you know what it'll be okay if I do this or if I go out this time it, it, it's not worth it it's really it's really not it's really not it's really not so what what kept you obviously maybe a prayer life or just I, I have to say too you're a product of straightway yes but also a product of straightway ministry there in South Carolina which is a beautiful elder and group uh, you you see on pastor's page for those of you who are following his page you see the buildings going up you see elder Austin's uh, home going up the community being built there in South Carolina this is a product of South Carolina justice uh, is a supporter from from that location so uh, what kept you all those early years going through high school? Um, building your own relationship with the Most High. You can't go based off of somebody else's relationship with Him. You have to have your own strong relationship with the Most High. And also, the sisters that were there. Um, they're, they're younger. We're not that many years apart. So I had someone to talk to who could tell me, Yo, Justice, it's not worth it because they done been where I've been at. So it's just like, you know, it's not worth what you it may look like is how can I put it um it's not worth sinning right yeah your right. soul your soul meant too much right and my sister Allison sister Allison that's my actual blood sister um that's like my backbone right there so anything that I needed any questions that I had I could always go to her and talk to her about whatever I had going on and sister Sierra sister Shalaya I could talk to them and just having um just that, that strong knit with, with your sisters, it helps. Hallelujah. It did help. And I'm sure there's many of you out there who are, who are watching us that, you know, the most has really gathering the youth right now. And, you know, you may have some conflict with your your siblings, your mother or your father. And we, by all means, do not divide homes here. That's not what we do. We present the truth and then we allow every man to choose for himself who he's going to follow. Um, did you deal with any division in your home with the truth? Uh, not asking anything personal.
personal just just you know to help them out there did you deal um, with your mother or father coming against you my mother no because my mom was here before I was um, her and my sister they started coming and they started listening to pastor long before I did I, I started coming to straightway whenever I was 13 but I say I didn't actually start listening to pastor and receiving truth receiving correction or rebuke until I was about 15 so Allison and mama was already here so I didn't have that division because they were here my my dad and my brother was just like, hey, this is what they do. This is their life. How were you with Pastor initially? Did you accept the way um, from the beginning? No, from the beginning I didn't. I was very rebellious and very, very stubborn. At 13, I was going into high school at the time. And I don't know, it was just like, you know, the world <laughs> is, hey, boys like you here and your friends telling you this and all this extra stuff. So it's like... This is the life that I thought I wanted. I wanted that life. And um, so, yeah, and Pastor was basically telling me, just as you shouldn't do this and just as you shouldn't do that and correcting me here and there. So, no, I I was not a big fan of Pastor Dow <laughs> at first. I wasn't. What, I wasn't. What, what sealed the deal for you? What got you following uh, the man that is hated by so many? Um, man, I had an eye-opening experience. Um, Whenever I was 15, my mom told me she was going to kick me out. And at 15, you know, that, that for me, it was exciting because I was like, bet, that's cool. I can go stay with my dad. I can go stay with my brother. I can go do what I want to do. You know, I can go and live in the world and be very worldly. I don't have to put on the head coverings and the skirts, and I don't have to give up my weekends just because. So she told me that she was going to put me out, and um, I was really excited about that. But as I was packing and I was actually about to leave, literally it got to that far. It wasn't like she was just saying this as a scare tactic. As a scare tactic, it was, you about to get out of my house. So um, uh, I had an eye-opening experience as I was about to leave. I actually, something in my spirit just told me, you know, you you going to hell and you no longer are going to have that relationship with the most high you're not gonna have your mama and your sister to help you with different things to talk to you about different things and it kind of it kind of hurt me deep down and I wasn't an emotional person but that like really hit home for me and it was like you know maybe I can give this this pastor Dale a chance and I can listen and I actually I remember it, uh, that weekend I actually went to tap service and I hated going to tap service I hated it but I actually went and I actually listened him that time and it was like man this man is really telling the truth it's not him just not wanting me just as personally to go out and have fun with her life no he's just telling you the truth and it was out of love and that's why I was like okay I think I can listen to this man and then whenever we started coming um, more often or I started coming more often I was like this this man is he's the real deal he's the truth and I didn't have a a strong man like Pastor Dad in my life. Um, my dad wasn't that strong man. He spoiled me and it was like if I want something, if I need something, here you can have it. I was the baby girl. I never got in trouble for anything. So having a different perspective of that and Pastor being the other side of the father figure that I needed and I didn't know that I needed. Um, yeah, it was, it was just very eye opening for me. And so now you have uh, an awesome, what I consider an awesome life, right? You're married to a Hebrew, you'll be a mother one day, and you got a lot of good things going on because of your obedience and the choices you've made. So I, I wanted to ask you, or at least ask you to speak on anything that comes to mind with, you know, once you, once you did commit to this way, once you did commit to following, you know, pastor, following the Messiah, um, you actually, you waited on uh, someone who would reach out and love you, care for you, provide for you, take, you know, which is your husband now. But uh, I know that's a temptation out there, the boys, you right. know, the boys for the youth. Is every, every little girl wants to be loved. Uh, so just, just talk to them about, about that, about waiting. Once you got in the faith and you kept yourself uh, until the right, perfect one, that means everything, doesn't it? It does, and it's so worth it, so worth it. Um, I... How old was I whenever we got married? I was 21 whenever we got married. I said that like that was so long ago. Anyway, <laughs> I was 21 whenever we got married. And it was definitely worth it. Like, 
definitely worth it because I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready, so I had to learn different things. I had to grow more. I had to build my relationship with the Most High. So waiting and not having all of the distractions that the world try to throw at you is is really worth it to wait and wait on the right man and. And, and let's spend a few more minutes on that for a second. Let's go back to why you weren't ready because we all, since we all want to be loved, we feel like we're ready and we don't know. We're, we're dece we deceive ourselves into believing that we're ready to get married, right? So when you're 13, 14, 15, 16, however old you are and you're just wanting a guy, uh, tell me some of the reasons why they should be able to discern within their own hearts that they're not ready and what they should do to get ready. Um, just your attitude or... I can say for me, my attitude, I was not ready to be a submissive um, wife to revere my husband, to fear my husband. I, I just wasn't ready for that because I had too much of an independent mindset. Um, and I'm still learning, I'm still growing, but just, um, Rest of your question. Yeah, no, that's okay. It's a very good start because you're actually saying to them, if you're if you're working in independence or walking in independence, you're not ready to be dependent upon right. your husband. Right. So, um, it's it's a big shift going from, or for me, it was a big shift going from being so independent to being dependent on him. So, um, just I don't know. I to get myself ready, I had to do a lot of soul searching. I had to talk to a lot of sisters who are married um, to learn from them and to get guidance in certain areas because what you what the world puts in your mind as this is what a wife should be this is what a couple should be that's not it at all so you have to really learn yourself and you have to um, humble yourself you really do and it's it's not the easiest thing to do. I cried a lot because it was just like, man, that's how I am. That really sucks. I, I don't like this part of me. So just having to change and grow from uh, one mindset to another. And so now that you are really assimilated into this ministry, which myself, I am too, uh, there is nothing that we don't have here, right? Every answer that you could possibly want, every um, every need is supplied. We're really in a, a beautiful, beautiful group of people. I know South Carolina misses you as you are now across the U.S. with your husband. Uh, but lastly, any words just to, uh, and we miss your voice in the singing videos, right? But uh, just any last words, anything, even if you have it for, for the young teenagers teenagers that are keeping themselves um, even if they've made mistakes that are now they're now going to choose to keep themselves and wait on uh, the right man to cover them anything uh, anything else just be encouraged and continue to press forward and build a relationship with the most high and you said earlier come out of her yeah. you're like i don't have <laughs> anything else to say. That's all I want to say come out of her but yeah just um, stay committed. Uh, reach out to other sisters if you have questions. If if it's to a level where you just, I don't know, just like I don't want such and such in my business. It's so worth it to have other people in your And I'm not saying, you know, you got to go and put your whole background out to people. But to communicate and to build relationships with other sisters that can help you. Don't be prideful. Don't be prideful in thinking, oh, well, this is not going to understand, or I've did this and I've done that. Nobody's perfect. We're just all striving for perfection. So that's, that's about that's it. That's good. Thank you so much for your time. Bless you and your husband for allowing you to come today. And we're going to miss you when you leave. We're going to miss you. Oh, shalom. <laughs> Bless you.